I suppose um, the way it would uh, come through in some cultures would be, would be this. Um, in the United States, you, you're called Christian brothers. In many other parts of the world, we call ourselves De La Salle brothers because there were Christian brothers uh, from Ireland who took our rule and certain ideas and they were in those countries before we came. But we're not unhappy about that. We're very happy to call ourselves brothers of De La Salle because uh, I think of him as somebody who was a very, very great man. I think he was a great man because he allowed himself to be led uh, by events well beyond everything which his, his breeding, his education, uh, if you like, had led him to. That where uh, the scholar, the theologian, uh, would have led, all those things would have led him to become a bishop. And yet he allowed himself to become involved with somebody who was interested in schools for poor boys. And somewhere in that meeting with, with the poor, he found himself challenged. He found himself challenged in a very profound way, probably about his own life, his own wealth, uh, his own level of society, and a certain sense that somebody ought to do something about this. And I have no doubt at all in my own reading uh, of his life that his initial contact with Adrian Neal and with the first brothers and the first schools was something which he saw as incidental. And I happen to believe also that even right up to 1694, he had seen his task as actually getting this movement off the ground. He'd been called in some way to help people and that's what he was going to do. But in 1694, he took that plunge of actually making vows for life with this group of people. He cut off all other possibilities at that moment. And that's when I often think, that's when he became a founder. It's not accidental that we have in, well, we don't have the copy any longer, but we did have up, up to the revolution, uh, a wonderful document called The Memoir of the Beginnings. And this was a manuscript found when he was in the south of France talking about the first years of the society. And most of the things we quote from de La Salle are from that. For example, if God had shown me the work that I was to do, the involvement with the Christian schools, etc., I wouldn't have dared to begin the work. God who does all things with wisdom and doesn't really push people, he says, led me imperceptibly so that one decision led to another until I found myself doing something that I had never anticipated. Now that's a man writing in 1694, 95, sometime after the work had got started. And I think that openness of this man to read events as calls from God uh, is probably one of the most striking things about him. And that in some way, if he'd just done this himself, it would have been one thing, but in some way he was able to inspire a small group of people to follow him. And yet even at the end of his life, when he died in 1719, he'd been almost 40 years tied up with these schools, and he had exactly 100 followers. And if you take another great saint, like Francis of Assisi, who in 22 years, gathered 10,000 disciples, de La Salle must have wondered as he lay dying what was going to happen to these 100 people. 23 communities, 100 people. One brother stuck down in Rome, Gabriel Drolin. And yet that was to become the great movement of the 18th century first, 19th century, and then of all those congregations founded in the spirit of his rule, sometimes with the very letter of his rule. The Myrus brother, for example, we're told, little brother of Mary is called to do in the small towns and cities what the brother of the Christian schools does in the large towns and cities. The Irish Christian brothers, founded with exactly the same second chapter of a rule, who take many of the customs 
and the first generation of which regard themselves as the Christian brothers, the brothers of the Christian schools in Ireland. So I think the man is inspirational, not just for his generation, but for many afterwards because of what he wrote and because of the wisdom of what he wrote in the conduct, the rule, and his meditations served thousands, I suppose, of other people, has given them inspiration and has made them realize that there are various ministries in the church and that one of the most important ministries will always be the person who's prepared to work with young people in the ministry of teaching. And that's why I think of John Baptist de La Salle. I'd have to say that as a young brother, when I read his life first, I found him rather remote, rather stern, uh, very disciplined in a way that I wasn't. But in the years that I've been privileged to actually study him and read him in his own native language uh, and come to understand him better through the work of great scholars, uh, I now have for him a very deep love and affection. And uh, each time I go into St. Peter's in Rome and I walk down the main aisle, I like to look up halfway down and there he is presiding over the whole nave. <laughs>